So let's continue exploring our three-way color wheels. Now we're going to focus on the color wheels themselves rather than just the brightness and see how those differ from the offset control and how they can help us solve some very specific problems we might have with our image. I'm continuing on on the Timeline 803 three-way color correctors. I'm going to hide my clips and I'm going to open up my scopes and I'm working first on the grayscale ramp and I'm going to switch this now to the RGB parade. Now what you're going to see is how these wheels affect the different color channels differently. Let's start with gain. What we know is these wheels down here were affecting brightness. So if I go ahead and make this brightness change, all right, it's affecting all three color channels equally. Reset that. Well, what happens if I grab this center point and pull it towards blue? All right, so we've got red, green, and blue. So pulling towards blue does two things. It increases blue and it decreases red. We're pulling away from red, decreasing red, and increasing blue at the same time. If I come back in the other direction, what will happen? I push towards red, and blue is dropping down, red is increasing. I'm not doing a pure, precise move towards red, so you're seeing green being affected as well. And you can see that as we move this around, but notice what's happening in the shadows. This is the gain control. It's leaving these zero pixels precisely the same. If I go ahead and hide these scopes, Command-Shift-W, Look at these blacks as I move around the gain control. They're just staying black. But every pixel, I mean, it doesn't take long before this gain control is having pretty big effects here, even in the darker shadows. Let's go ahead and reset that. Now let's pull up our scope again, and let's take a look at our lift control. Watch on the bottom end now what's happening on those pixels. All right, I'm pushing towards blue. Blue is lifting. Going back towards red, red is lifting. And let's pull towards green. Green is lifting, red and blue are falling. One of the things you're going to find is as you make adjustments that affect the green channel, it will kind of spill over to the red and blue channels. It kind of has to do with the math in DaVinci Resolve. And you often get these secondary effects when affecting the green channel. It looks kind of annoying, like you wouldn't want that to happen. But once you understand that it's happening, it's actually kind of a shortcut. Sometimes I can make an adjustment to green that also does an adjustment to red and blue that I want to happen. So one move makes three things happen. All right, and so play around with this to get a feel for what's going on as you make these adjustments. I'm going to reset lift. Take a look at gamma. Now, knowing what we know, what are we going to expect? We're going to expect zero black to stay zero black. We're going to expect 100% white to stay 100% white. Let's move towards magenta. And that's kind of what's happening. You can see the green channel, as we get really extreme, you can see some of these channels start clipping out. That's what you're seeing, that flattening of the line. That's clipping of detail, which is generally, usually unwanted. And as I move this around, you can see that we're not really affecting the pure whites or the pure blacks. Although if you take a look at the image itself, it's a little questionable. I mean, is that pure white? Maybe this last line of pixels all the way on the right-hand side of the screen is pure white. And maybe this last line of pixels all the way on the left-hand side of the screen, maybe that is pure black. Otherwise, this gamma control is having an enormous effect on the entire image. So you can see why it is that I like to work outside in. I much prefer to do my initial corrections using my gain and lift controls before I start working with this gamma control. Let's go to two shots down. So this is the image we were looking at at the end of the last movie. And let me hide these scopes. Clearly has a blue cast. So how might I deal with that here using these controls? If I bypass what I've done already, I've got a slight grade on here. And as you look at this node, you can see a little icon there telling me that I'm doing something. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about nodes. Just know that I already have a slight correction going on here. So if I shift D, but it was a brightness correction. Remember, we couldn't see past the color problem. Let's pull up our scopes. All right, so the shadows look like they probably could use some work, and the highlights definitely could use some balancing work. So let's balance out the shadows. I'll take the lift control, and what do I need? Less blue, maybe a little more red. So I'll pull away from blue and closer to red. And I'm looking for common elements in each of these three channels to line up. So maybe this little bit here, maybe I'll try lining those up 
generally to kind of balance in and bring in the balance of the shadows. Then the highlights, I'm going to look at the same thing. What might I want to balance out? Well, maybe in the pure highlights, like right there and right there, this little like dip here probably got clipped out here in the blue channel. So maybe let's try doing that. Let's bring up our red. So we're going to push to red and get that kind of even with green while not letting blue go too nuts. So you'll pull in one direction, and as I pull in the direction I'm pulling in, blue is moving too far, too fast. So now I'll move more to the upper right-hand side to bring blue back up. And you'll get a real feel for this as you start playing with these images, and, or with your images, start working with them. You get a nice feel for balancing this out. Now I can't quite tell what to do on the mid-tones yet. I need to take a look at this image. So I'll hide the scopes, Shift F, and now I'll Command D. That's where we were, that's where we are. There we go, that's an image I can really look at. I almost start seeing some blues popping through here. I can see their skin tones have become normalized. Right, I'm seeing some nice color in here. Let's bypass this again, I'll Shift D. That's where we started, that's where we ended up. Shift F. So I've got several more shots. If you have access to these clips, start working with the lift gamma gain controls. Pull up your scopes first, look at your scopes, Decide what needs normalizing. Where can I try to get the RGB pixels to line up? Highlights are usually a good place to start, and shadows are usually a good place to start, especially the shadows. Black has no color. So if you find that there are differences in the waveforms as you examine your blacks, that's a great place to try to line up these three waveforms using the lift control.